Hey, this is Dan with School of Sheet Solutions Consulting. And today I'm gonna to answer another question from the Smart Sheet community. So Amia is asking how to find the earliest date from children based on the status in another column. And if we look at this question, it looks like this person is saying, I'm trying to find the earliest minimum date from children based on the value in a different column. So if the value in a particular status column is not completed, canceled or on hold, um, then consider those children and find the earliest date from them. So it looks like this person has tried a min collect nested formula, which I think is the right approach, but is getting a unparsable error. So let's take a look at how we can solve this. So I've set up a pretty simple um, project task tracking sheet here showing a status and these are some of the statuses listed in the question and then the start date and the end date. And so what we're gonna do here is pull out the earliest and latest start and end date respectively for only those rows where the status is not equal to completed, on hold or canceled. So the first thing that we're gonna do is build this min collect formula and I think the way that the user tried is doing a reference to children and then making the criteria criterion range the whole status column. And I'm just gonna make it say uh, completed for simplicity. And if we do this, we're gonna get an incorrect argument set error. Um, previous, this person was getting an unparsable error. Uh, that might've just been for the syntax or how it was built. But in this particular case, this is the correct syntax but the arguments are not correct. And the reason this error occurs is because um, the, there's two ranges being considered. First, there's the child row of, the child, the child rows of row number two, which is these four, these are the children. And then there's the entirety of the status column. So the ranges are different sizes. Um, if you're building these types of formulas, your ranges need to be the same size. So if we change this to, the children of status at row, they're gonna be the same size and it's gonna return the earliest start date for only those that are completed. I turn this to not starting, we don't get a value. If this one becomes completed, we get 10 2, which is the value not completed. If these all become completed, we're gonna get the first one. So that's now working properly. All right, so we have the beginnings of our formula here. And we want to expand this to make it so we're not considering uh, various statuses. So for this situation, we are not going to count anything that is either completed, canceled, on hold, or blank. So you can do something like um, we have children, the criterion range is status, the children of status at row. So these uh, rows three through six, you could do does not equal completed. And if we put that in here, say this is our first one, we're gonna get the second one. And you could uh, you know, do this several times for each of your various statuses. So if this was in progress, we'd get 10 two. You can do it a little bit faster with an and, we could you know, do this for on hold and blank, but we can do it a bit faster with an and statement. So if we do and, and what an and will do is allow us to put all these different logical expressions into one and get our proper data back. So we're gonna do at cell does not equal completed. And we'll repeat this bit for each status on hold. Right. So now we see we get 10 two, which is this date, these are completed and canceled, so we do not want to get these dates here. So that's working as it should. If we put it in this other phase, which has a, a few child as well, this is returning 10.6, the first one is in progress. Let's say we put this on hold, and maybe we get a uh, not started here, we get 10.10. .10. Now that we have this formula, we can very easily get our um, end date by just switching the min to a max. And here we're getting 10.5, which is the associated date with our in progress. And here we're getting 10.13, which is the end date of our not started task. 
And then on the project level, we can make this a bit simpler. If we just do a min children and a max children. Since we have multiple levels of hierarchy now, this row here is only going to consider these two because there's these are the two children of our first row. And these already have the logic built in. So uh, by default, this will pull on the earliest and latest project dates. Open up your Gantt view and see the entire product as such. And now you have your uh, minimum and maximum dates. If you add more levels of hierarchy, this will continue to work. You would just need to make sure this formula, whether it's min or max for the start or end date respectively, is put into your parent rows. So that's how you can pull out the earliest or latest dates from a group of cells based on certain statuses. I hope that this was helpful and you liked this. If you did, please click thumbs up in the video and consider subscribing for more uh, Smartsheet tutorials. And if you have any problems or questions that you're encountering, uh, let me know in the comments and maybe I'll make a video for you. Thanks.